Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to another Thursday Live on a beautiful, beautiful Florida day. Fall is coming. Oh, I can feel it in the air. Fall is coming. I'm so excited. Yeah, fall for us is in the 80s, but that makes me happy anyway. I'm glad that you're here. I actually was out organizing, or not organizing, speaking. I was speaking to a group this morning in Ocala. So I figured I would stop by this lovely park for our Facebook Live today. And I hope you can all hear me all right. I've got my microphone, but there's a little traffic. So I'm trying to make sure that everything comes through all right. But today we are talking about creative ways to customize your bullet journal and make it more your own. And I have a couple of ways that I do this for people. I absolutely love using my bullet journal to track things. I do my bullet journal in a bit of a different way than I showed last week. Last week I showed the simple, basic bullet journal, all the concepts of putting together one and getting it basically traditional. And now I'm going to tell you how to make it a little bit more your own and customize it, whether you're the creative type or not. These are hopefully some ways that you can make it your own. As I mentioned, today I'm at a park. My name is Susanna Kay. I'm the owner of Spark Organizing, and I love to teach productivity and organizational tips to people in order to help them let their light show in the world and get them uncovered and doing what they're meant to do. So I hope that this helps you out today. We're going to play it by ear because being in a park means that my setup is a little different so we will see how this goes but here is the journal let me flip this un over so you can see what i see as far as my journal and i know facebook does not like it when i flip my phone this way but we're going to try to force it and see if I can force it to show me what I want to see. Now this is my handwritten journal. And in my handwritten journal, I have a couple of different things going on. For one, I like to be able to track things. I am a big tracker of all sorts of data. And when I track my data, I like to be able to do it easily, so having it in my bullet journal is really important to me. My bullet journal is what would travel with me everywhere. So this is the most important thing to see. Let's get this camera a little bit better. But here you could probably see in a moment the menu plan. And my menu plan is important to me because we have so much going on each week that it is impossible to remember even what we're eating when because we travel. Sometimes my stepdaughter is with us. Sometimes she's not. Sometimes we have plans that evening. This keeps me from overbuying. So in my bullet journal, I tend to do menu planning. There are a number of other things I do in the bullet journal, but before we move on, those of you creative types, it does not have to take hours to make it fun and make it your own. You can do this with just colors. You can do this with little icons and just change them up. I have a whole book about doodling and I love to doodle. So some of these were inspired by my doodle book and it took me all of an extra two minutes to add these and I'm the type of person I do like things to be fun. So I do enjoy having a little creativity in my bullet journals. Also, in a handwritten journal, you can use color really easily and add to your information. So on this page, this is the savings page. And on my savings page, I can have a savings goal and I'm a visual person. So it's important for me to not just see the number in the bank account because my little kittens on Red Bull brain does not necessarily translate that to how it fits into my goal. But when I see it visually, it does. So I really enjoy 
being able to add color and a little fun to something as boring to me as savings because I am just not a natural saver. It's not what I love to do, but if I can make it visual and make it a goal, then I'm much more successful. So I usually do have a savings tab in my bullet journal. And as you can see, I don't take a long time making these super cute. Some people do. You see these on Pinterest and you see all these fantastically hand-drawn pages. It looks like it would take an entire day to get some of these pages done. And I would rather get some of the items on my to-do list done than just have cute pages. So don't spend too long making your bullet journal too decorated or too intricate. If it's taking too long, then that's time that is being taken away from your tasks. So find quick and easy ways, if you're like me and you like it to be decorative, find quick and easy ways to make it interesting. I love to use colors. Now my colors are not color coded for anything in particular. It's just because I like the look of colors. So I'll use different colors for my goals just to make the page visually interesting. And because this is a page that I would have for a little bit longer, that would be relevant, I can spend a little bit more time making it pretty. But again, not a lot of time. I could have done a better job than this, but that's a whole hour that I would have spent on decorating a bullet journal page rather than getting my to-dos done. So again, I do not spend a ton of time decorating. But just to add a little bit of interest, you can see also on my daily page, I do like to sometimes, a lot of times when I'm on maybe a long meeting call, that's when I might doodle some of these days of the week or some of the little decorations because I am also, I have some of the symptoms of ADD. While I might not have ADD myself, I definitely have some of those symptoms and I can't necessarily focus on audio information well unless I'm also doing something with my hands. I'm pretty sure I'm the type of person that the fidget spinner was invented for yet I have not gotten myself a fidget spinner. What I do is that's when I decorate things. I'm listening and drawing, which helps the information for me to process better because I'm a visual learner. So giving me information through audio will not stick. But if I am connecting the audio message with something visual, it has a better chance of actually connecting. And then I can also be taking my notes in between the doodles. So it just keeps me and my little Again, kittens on Red Bull brain, a little more focused. Oh, thank you, Mary. I appreciate the suggestion. I'm actually about to hop over to the other journal, which is the one that I use more often. And this one is going to be in that direction because this one is my printable journal. Now my printable journal makes it so much easier for me to capture information quickly and have it really cute. I created a cute cover and it's simply in a three ring binder. Now in this binder, I have a couple of things that are important to me when I look for the binder itself. My first thing that I need it to have are good clips. The good clips, mean that I'm not going to struggle with getting this open and closed. And I also like that it lays flat. So the binder clips are all, the rings are all on one side. As you can see, they're on one side instead of in the middle. That just lays better for me. I enjoy it more and I can fold back the cover page if I need to. Another portion that I really like about this binder is that it has the pockets on the side and the pockets allow me to pre-print pages. I don't know if you can see that. I'll get a better shot in a minute, but I can pre-print some of the pages. And that way I don't have to run to the printer every day. I can have the week or month's worth and it'll be right there for me. It just makes it a little bit easier. Let me make sure that this is squared up for you so you can see it a little bit. The writing itself does not matter as much as the general design of these pages so you get kind of an idea of what these pages are and what they do. So don't focus too much. If you can't see the writing and what I wrote on there, it's okay. You're not actually missing anything. 
it simply just that it happens to be written on. But my planner starts with the usual daily tasks. Now these are all printable, so I don't spend a lot of time trying to decorate my pages and doodle on them to make them visually interesting. They're already interesting to me. These are designs that I found online that I really enjoyed that somebody else created. And there are two websites. I will post the link to these two websites in the comments after I'm done. But these two websites, in case you wanted to jot them down, that I use the most, one is called, and I love this name, lifeismessyandbrilliant.com. So at lifeismessyandbrilliant.com, a lot of these super cute, girlier decoration pages are on there for free download. Then there's also another one called 101 Planners. 101 Planners has a more general design option. So if you aren't quite as girly and frou-frou as I am sometimes, this might be a better option for you. So check those two out, and I really appreciate that they have these online. The people who designed them just did a really good job, and they're very fun. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better. I think I just made it worse for you, all of you. But they did a great job designing these, so I have no need to recreate the wheel. On this first page, I always put on the first page my current day's information. This is today and what is important to me today. What's important to me today are my notes. I have my notes of what's going on today. And I just do the highlight of the day. This is just the most important thing today because I don't want to write every note that could possibly be important. I want to keep it focused on what my one thing is today. You may have heard me talk about knowing your one thing before. My one thing is I actually put it on a little dry erase board on my desk. My one thing is the one thing that I do that day that will make me feel like it was a successful day. This is different each day. My one thing one day will be completely different from my one thing another day, but if my entire day derails, it's not a problem. If I got my one thing done, it makes me feel better. Below that is my to-do list. One of the concepts I talk about a lot is the fact that if it does not fit on a post-it, it does not fit in your day. So I actually enjoy that my to-do list is so small on here. This is probably, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven items. That's probably more than I can get done in a day. Seven items is probably too much. But I just put my very top priority to-dos in this box. And I like that it's too small because it keeps me from doing that brain dump list and thinking that I can get more done than I really can. So keep your to-do list portion of your day really small if you want to feel like you succeeded in your day. I get most of my to-do list done. I usually have about five or six items on there. I don't think I've ever really gotten through seven unless I'm writing all the minute details on there. Then in the middle, I have my meal plan because with everything so crazy in my life, it's good for me to know what I'm eating that day and that's just taken one of those decisions out of my life because I planned it ahead of time. And a lot of times I planned my meals at least my dinners and a lot of my lunches at the beginning of the week. So this is already sort of pre-decided for me. And I've based my shopping on it and it's already prepared and just ready for me to grab and go. And then finally, there's my schedule. As if you've listened to me, you've probably heard me say, it's really helpful to write your to-do items on a schedule and be realistic about the amount of time that it takes. Because it's easy to see your to-do list, but if you have five items on your list, they all look like they should take about the same amount of time because they all have the same priority look in that list. But when you write them on your schedule, that's when you really see, oh, when I do my journal design for Mary today, I really need to take two hours to work on that versus it'll be done in 15 minutes. So I need to take two hours of my day and where is that going to fit in with the craziness of my day today because I'm all over the place today. So by putting it on my schedule, not only am I more realistic about the time 
but I am also more likely to get it done because I've blocked off that time and nothing else will encroach on that unless it's an absolute emergency. So having this schedule on my day is really important to me. For me, my next page is called my vision board. This is another one from Life is Messy and Brilliant. It is awesome. And I highly recommend you go over to their website to print this one up. My vision board, it lists my top six accomplishments. For me, I've got three so far. Sometimes I have to let it marinate in my brain a little bit. And then my top six goals for the month. So this is September, October. It looks at September as far as the past and it looks October as far as my top goals. And then this year, it talks about bad habits I'm going to break, new skills I'd like to learn, books I'd like to read. I have kind of a little list of what my goals are. And I like to keep this right behind my current day because I want this to be front and center in my life. So I can see my accomplishments on those days that I really need to pick me up because things are not going like I expected them to. And I can see my goals. So I can make sure that my to-do items are in line with what my goals are. It's very easy to get derailed. Behind that, start, you know me, I have my post-its, and I use my post-its for my tabs. This way there's really easy to change out. As I change papers, they can unstick and stick very easily. They're just handwritten. But it starts my daily group of items. A gratitude log is something that I do every single day, or at least my goal is. There are some times where I'm not doing quite as well with it. But this is a life changer for me. The gratitude journal is where you write down one thing, at least one thing that you are thankful for and why. For me, I actually try to write down 10 things each day. My goal is 10. I usually hit about five to seven things that I am grateful for. And I do this every morning. By doing this every morning, it starts me in the mental framework of being grateful for what I have. No matter how bad my life is at that time, I could have a cold, I might be grateful for Kleenex that day. And I'm grateful for Kleenex because life is less messy and it's more comfortable with Kleenex. And those gratitudes will help me through the day. And it just reframes your mind to have a more positive day and to see the bright sides of things which then opens you up to seeing the opportunities that arise. Because when you're in a negative space, it's really hard to see when an opportunity knocks. All of a sudden, you aren't even paying attention because you're too busy worrying about what's going wrong. So this helps me notice what's going right. Gratitudes don't have to be a really big deal. They're just little things that you're grateful for. Like I said, I've been thankful for Kleenex. I'm usually thankful for coffee. I love my coffee. I am thankful for people in my lives and for health and Sometimes I'm grateful for big things, sometimes little things. I have a full journal. I just printed this one off to show you, but I have a full, nice leather-bound journal that I love for my gratitudes, and it's almost full now. I need to get a new journal, but it's a life changer, and it's a good thing to have in your bullet journal, right behind your daily things, so you remember to do it. You see that I have the tab on gratitude, so I can flip to it quickly. And with their printable at Life is Messy and Brilliant, they have each day a spot for at least one, if not several, gratitudes. Another thing I like to do is track habits. Now, I've mentioned a number of times, you don't want to start too many new habits at once because that's just setting yourself up for failure. So if you're starting a diet, I say don't also try to change your budget drastically or start budgeting drastically at the same time that you're dieting, those two things simply will not go together and you're going to fail at both. Pick one habit at a time. So my habit tracker is not very full because I only believe in doing a couple of habits at once. But it's nice because along the top, I know you can't see it well, but there are numbers for each day in October. And along the sides, there's a spot to write what the habit is. Each day that you do what habit you're working on, you write an X in the spot. Right now I've got gratitudes and exercise. And each day that I did each of these, I put an X. So I can see how well I'm doing with this new habit. And that really sometimes gives me a reality check that I need and I can see if I'm not exercising as much as I truly want to and get back on board or I can also analyze 
okay, if this is a habit that I said that I wanted to start, but I haven't, why not? What has become more important? Or do I need to just refocus? And sometimes something else has come up that's become more important. There might be a, a strain on your budget that happens and suddenly you have to focus on saving money where exercise kind of falls by the wayside for a little bit because you've got a new thing that you're using your willpower for. So it's a really good chance to see where you're at in relation to some of your goals as far as habits go. <laughs> yes, Ruth, you and I both, coffee. I am grateful for coffee. Too bad coffee's not on my habit tracker. I am pretty sure I would rock that one. Maybe I should just write drink coffee on my habit tracker so I have one line that has an X every single day. That might make me feel really good about myself. After my habit tracker comes my weekly group. For me, my weekly group includes weekly to-dos. So these are just items that I want to keep top of mind that are coming up this week. So I don't forget that I've got a large project coming up or a day that's going to be pretty full. I want to make sure that I have it just a quick glance because I don't necessarily need my full calendar. I just want to eyeball it real quick. Then this is from the 101planners.com. This is the menu planner. So this is a great place for me to just jot down quickly based on what my schedule is and who's around and what we have in the fridge, what my menu is. So I like to have that. And I have a tab for the menu so that I can quickly find it within my weekly section. This is another tracker and I use this for various things, but it has this nice dot matrix that you can use for a graph. You see my graph is kind of started because it's towards the beginning of the month that I did this and it's almost the end of the week. So I will be able to update this, but this is a weekly graph on some of my progress. And that just gives me a good visual. Again, I'm a visual person. I need some of these things to be highly visual. And then comes my monthly section. Within my monthly section, one of the things I really enjoy is the monthly payments. This would be all of my bills. And this is from the Life is Messy and Brilliant printables. It has what the payment name is, it has the payment due date and the date that it was paid, the amount that it was paid, and it has the month so you can mark down. I don't do the date paid. Instead, what I do is I mark it off. If it's monthly, I mark it off as the check mark in the box under the month means that it was paid for that month, which that works better for me. So just because something says that you should do it one way doesn't mean you can't adjust and make it yours. I highly recommend taking common things and adjusting them to make them work for you. And that's how I adjust my monthly bills. For those of you who are the solopreneurs or entrepreneurs who watch over your social media, at Life is Messy and Brilliant, they have a blog and social media statistics tracker. This is a kind of fun one if you're trying to grow your social media audience or be aware of what's going on with it. And it's a nice way to just have everything that you want in one place. You only need to update it once a month and it's just highly useful. The birthday tracker, I think that many of us who like to send birthday cards and remember birthdays need this because life gets too busy and on my calendar it gets a little overwhelming when there are too many things on my virtual calendar. So I have taken the birthdays off of my virtual calendar unless they were something that I really need to remember and they go on my birthday tracker. This just kind of always lives in the back of the, the journal. Some of these are for a full year. So I don't need to replace any of these monthly ones in the back. They're tracking the full year. I leave these in for the full year. Here's my savings again. Like I mentioned, I am all for savings. This one I created myself because I really liked the idea of the mason jar and having it where I can see it really big what my savings goal is and where I'm at as far as my progress. And it's just a nice way to add a bunch of color, but also keep me motivated. Every once in a while, when I'm having a rough time, I might even pull this out of my binder and tape it to my wall for a bit, just to remind myself what I'm saving towards. And then the very back, if you don't use a grocery app, I use a grocery app usually, but they do have a groceries list where you can just check off which things you need and it's pretty handy. I've had some clients that have used this and really enjoyed it. So the groceries list is great 
But there are so many things that you can do with a bullet journal that's printable. Because like I said, I am not much of one to spend all of my time drawing on the pages and setting things up. Certain personality types do really well with it. If you're the maintainer personality type or if you're the harmonizer, then those are probably two personality types that would enjoy the handwritten one a little bit more and you can find it, a lot of people find it to be a meditative time while you sit with your day and plan it. I am an innovator with a bit of prioritizer, so I am definitely a printable type of girl. If you want to find out more about the personality types, uh, that comes from the book called Organizing for Your Brain Type. She really broke them down very well. Finally, in my bullet journal, I like to have a pocket, at least one pocket, so I can just have all of my pre-printed pages, and again, that way I'm not running back and forth to the printer or scrambling for it. It's all right there as I plan my day or my week, and I just pull it out. Usually I've hole punched them ahead of time, pull them out, throw them in, and I'm ready to go. So a bullet journal is what you make of it. There are a number of other modules that you can add to it, depending on if you wanted to track various things or if you have other ways of doing goals and all of your gratitudes and things like that. Just check online on Pinterest. If you just search printable bullet journal, you will find more pages than you could ever imagine. Don't get stuck down that wormhole for too long, but check it out and maybe create yourself a little Pinterest board for a while while you find what works for you. And I know I've got a board of some of the printables and bullet journal ideas that I love that if you're interested, just let me know and I'll share it with you. But the bullet journal can really keep you on track if you use it consistently and if you try to add one new habit at a time. If you're trying to add too many new habits at a time, it's probably not going to work. So as you start with a bullet journal, I would say make using the bullet journal your habit. You don't need to be adding on bullet journal along with a million other things. There you are. Hi, <laughs> nice to see you again. You don't need to add on the bullet journal with a number of other things that you're doing because that's going to be a pretty hefty habit to get into to start with. So start with your bullet journal. Let me know what you enjoy about your bullet journal and how you do it because I'm always looking for new solutions as I work with some of my productivity coaching clients. I love to hear how people use their bullet journals, what they've created for them, what works for them. So I can also recommend this to other people who enjoy the same thing and might think like you. So I really appreciate it. I'm glad that you were joining me today. I really hope that you found at least a couple of bite-sized pieces that were of interest to you. I'm sorry that I'm in a park with trucks and everything, but it's a beautiful day for it. I hope you enjoyed the change of scenery and I look forward to seeing you next week. Next week we will be continuing with productivity. We're gonna talk about some of the tricks that I use to complete my to-do list quickly and work on mostly the priorities that are most important. So next week we're gonna talk about some of those time management concepts that, are, that I've talked about a little bit throughout some of the videos. I'm gonna put them all in one video that talks about fire time and top three and batching and some of those important concepts. So that'll be next week. I hope that you can enjoy me then. I also have Tuesday at 8 p.m. We have our home series still going on. We're talking about kids this month. So you'll see more tricks for getting your kids organized and on the ball, hopefully. That's the goal. And then Wednesday nights throughout October at 6 p.m. We still have our grief organizing after loss. And this is where we are simply talking about how to handle all of the stuff after maybe you've lost a loved one or gone through some form of trauma and things have fallen apart. I hope you can enjoy it with me for both of those. I will see you next time. Check me out at sparkorganizing.com if you'd like more information and have a beautiful day. I love you.